Welcome folks. What I have for you today is a heater core out of a late 70's uh, General Motors uh, full-size van and uh, this is actually good. This one doesn't leak or anything. I made a mistake. I'll mention this before I start the rest of the video here. Is, uh, I replaced the heater core in the van to get some heat for winter and it turned out not to be the heater core. Okay, It ended up being uh, an adjustment from a cable that wasn't actuating a door to um, divert the air so I was just bringing in cold air and it wasn't going through the heater core so basically I was just thinking I was getting heat and then uh, by adjusting the controls which weren't working there's a door that acts as a, a diverter and it was just bringing cold air in rather than trying to force air through here to heat it up. Now what a heater core basically is is a small radiator. Okay in your car you have a much larger one of these basically it's a bunch of very fine fins and fine tubes there are all different designs from way back when the automobile was first uh, invented or made for that matter and this one is the late 70s edition thereof. Um, what I'm going to do for you today is uh, show you how much heat it can generate. Uh, off to the side I've got a, a kettle uh, full of almost boiling water and I've, I've rigged up here on the side uh, a funnel and there's two tubes. I can't really show you here because the way I've got this thing zoomed in but there's two tubes uh, brass or copper tubes that go into this heater core. One is the inlet, which basically is, um, if you're talking about this being installed in a vehicle, um, your water pump circulates the hot coolant, meaning your engine heats up the water. That's why when you first start up your car for the day and it's a cold winter day, you're not getting much heat because you have to heat the water up before it uh, creates enough heat to go through these many little tubes and then the fins, as air is being forced through there, extracts the heat into your vehicle. Now with the radiator, it just basically takes that heat and through the engine compartment, then out usually through the bottom of the vehicle. But whereas in the case of um, heating a vehicle, this heat, um, is there air, forced, air is forced by a fan in your vehicle, sometimes 2-3 speed fan, depending on where you set it. Um, it will blow air from, well, I'll use the um, demonstration from behind because you can see it better on the camera. Air comes towards you as you're viewing it from in this video. Air comes through all these little openings here with the tubes that take the, the hot coolant through there. And these little tiny fins, I mean, you, you just touch on these little fins, they're so thin and they're easy, easy to be bent and they have to be clear of obstruction so the air can get through. So you're basically putting antifreeze and water mixture through your water pump through your engine. And as the, uh, the engine heats up the, the coolant, uh, it gets forced into one tube and into a series of passages and weaves its way. It depends on the design. This one looks like this, uh, what I would call a split core. It looks like it goes in from one side and then travels back in the other half of those sections, uh, section of tubes. Whereas, uh, depending on the, the engineers and the designers, how they decided to circulate the thing. But the, the basic principle is the same. You just basically want to get hot water flowing through all these little tubes and then these fins will act as a radiator. Okay, And what I have here in behind it's just a little two-speed fan, a little personal fan. It looks like it's about an eight-inch diameter fan. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fan going, stabilize the temperature here, and I've got a thermometer, my outdoor thermometer that I hang outside my kitchen door here. And you can see where the um, where the reading is there right now. It kind of looks like we're sitting at about. Uh, it's got both scales on it. On the left is Celsius, and on the right is Fahrenheit. Um, on the right hand side being the Fahrenheit it looks like it's just over 68 degrees and we're just over 20 degrees on the Celsius side. So there's our oh, I can guess here, say your uh, ref, reference point. So I'm going to get the kettle going here. It's um it's already been boiled so I'm just going to reheat the water to make sure we're up to uh, you know over 200 degrees. Um, a lot of newer vehicles, they are running uh, engine coolant temperatures of over 200 degrees. Um, the older ones, they could have been as low as 160 degrees. But for winter here in Canada, as long as I got a 180 degree uh, thermostat in the vehicle, an older one, not computer controlled, that'll give you plenty of heat. If you go to the 195 degree thermostat, which is when the pollution uh, equipped vehicles came out more in, in the early 70s, um, they went to the 195 degree thermostat as a general um, point to mention. So we're going to put in, uh, well it's going to be over 200 degree water in here and hopefully um, I won't get splashed. I've got a, a funnel up here. You can just see the um, 
what's going into a piece of heater hose and into one of the tubes, and then I've got an overflow tube here going down into a bucket on the floor, just in my workshop here. So as this thing fills up, I'm going to stop filling it as soon as I see this um, overflow water going into this tube and down into the bucket. And then we'll see. keep an eye on the, um, the thermometer there, and we'll see what we get out of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the fan on to high speed. It's got two speed fans, so I'm going to get that going. You can hear it going in the background. And we'll just see if that makes any effect on the uh, temperature. It should pretty much be the same. Just keep an eye on the, the red vial there for the um, thermometer. And watch what happens when I start dumping this uh, almost boiling kettle water into this funnel here. And uh, we'll see what it does. Uh, I might have to be uh, quick if this... Uh, I don't know if it's mercury that they fill them with. Mercury is usually silver. I don't know what this colored water kind of stuff they got in there is. I'll have to read up on that. But if it starts getting anywhere near the end there, I'm going to have to remove the thermometer because if you, I'm pretty sure that if I, I try to um, increase it past its uh, highest uh, point on that thermometer, it might even uh, break the vial because of the pressure. I'm really not sure, but I'm going to, you might see my hand come in there real quick and remove that thermometer if it starts to climb too high. So keep an eye on the, um, on the thermometer, I'm going to start adding the kettle water. Here's the kettle here. Okay, so we're going to start adding some water. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully this water will uh, make its way through. See, it's not being forced like through like a water pump would. This is just uh, a gravity feed that I've got here. Okay, it's starting to come through the, the overflow hose. I'm going to keep adding it there. And as you can see, the temperature is coming up. Okay. It's, it's coming up, it's coming up, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove that, uh, that thermometer once it gets too high. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit of water here, because it will be cooled down by the uh, fan effects. You're almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit there, and I'm just, I've got the kettle water here and I'm pouring it in. So as soon as that gets close, I'm going to have to remove the uh, thermometer if it climbs a bit too high. We're hitting desert temperatures, folks. We're over 100 degrees. We're looking... As soon as it gets to about 120, I think I'll, if it does get that high, I'll remove the thermometer, so enjoy it while you can. Okay, it's climbing, it's climbing, so we've made a, okay, we made 120 degrees. Now I'm going to have to remove the thermometer because uh, I don't want that thing to blow up. Okay, so there's the, there's our thermometer back in place. And see there, we've, we've, we've hit the limit. Okay, I can feel, I can feel, with my hand, I can feel a tremendous amount of heat coming out of here. Um, the hotter your engine's coolant is, the more heat that will more than likely be in, um, forced out of your uh, heater core. Okay, so i got to turn this to get that right. So you can see there, we're, um, by having this, so I can put it back there again. And you can see the water is starting to, to cool off a little bit there. It's not... I don't think it's going to go past the 120 degree mark. See, I'm not adding any more um, almost boiling kettle water into the, uh, the heater core, so you'll see it. Uh, I can probably keep it there now. Hopefully I got this turned in just the right direction. Yeah, get that red vial. you got to have it at a certain angle here. It won't show up on the video from where the video camera's uh, viewing perspective is. But you can see there it's starting to drop now. Um, there is, because of the way these pipe levels are, the lowest one here, I might be missing an inch or two of actual um, hot water in here because of where it is. It's just a gravity feed here, so it's hard to say. It might still be a bit full, but we'll watch that temperature, you see. So it's the equivalent of uh, your heater controls in your vehicle. Say if you don't want it as hot in there, you can usually um, turn the temperature of the water down the amount of heat. Some of them have a red band and maybe a blue band and you just, it could be a slider. Uh, the older vehicles use cables. Uh, the newer ones with um, all this uh, computer stuff going on and oxygen sensors and the like, uh, a lot of them go with vacuum hoses and that's how they're actuated. So you can see the temperature starting to come down with what water's in there and I'm just touching this pipe here on the side and I don't really want to hang on to that too long. I'm sure that's still at least a I don't know, I could say it's over 100 degrees, or maybe, maybe not quite. Half a boiling, let's say. But according to this, it, it shows, um, you can see it dropping there. We're down to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees uh, Celsius. 
We're lucky today, folks. We've got uh, a dual scale thermometer there, so I can uh, show people all around the world according to whatever um, system they're using, whether it's a metric system or the, the old uh, North American or British standard system. I guess maybe the British have gone metric too nowadays, the European Union and all. I'll just leave that there for another minute and watch it come down just so you can see the, the action of this thing. Um, that's, like I say, a little fan, little fan in behind here, and it's blowing air through the heater core, so it's, it's coming up this way. So it's coming towards you. This air is being blown towards the camera. Like I say, if I put my hand here, it's not as hot as it was, that's for sure. It almost feels like cool air now. You see, we're getting down to almost, uh, well, we're still a little high for an average room temperature of 72 or 75 degrees uh, Celsius. And that would uh, be the equivalent around, oh, 22, 24 degrees. So um, there's what a heater core basically does in your vehicle. Okay, some of them are combined in housings with your air conditioning, uh, what is it, the, uh, the evaporator in there. And, uh, but we're, we're just doing heating for today, folks. Um, this is to show you how you get heat into your vehicle. It's basically a hot water system, and the engine heats your coolant up, and then the water pump pushes the, uh, the water through the engine block and heads, and when it gets too hot, the thermostat in your engine, or near your engine, depending on the manufacture and make, um, it'll, it'll take, any time the coolant gets too hot, it'll, it'll um, reroute the, um, the coolant into your radiator to cool it down, and a thermostat in your engine will regulate that temperature, and it usually is within, well, uh, depending on how accurate the thermostat is and the way, the, the way your radiator is efficiently cooling. Some radiators get plugged up and the engine runs even hotter than what the thermostat wants to do when it's fully open. So I thought I'd mention a few extra things while I'm at it. So there's today's video, folks. There's the uh, the heater core out of a late a late 70s uh, GM full-size van, and this one's still good. Okay, so I can probably reuse this in the future if I ever have to replace one. Okay, so the thermometer is uh, we're almost down to room temperature again. So you can see the effect of what happens when you put hot. Well, in today's video, it's hot water from a kettle that you would boil for tea or or what have you. Um, but normally you have an antifreeze water mixture going through there so you don't make things rust and keeps it from freezing and it actually raises the boiling point of the coolant as well. So I hope you enjoyed what I had to show you. It just sort of came to mind. I had these spare parts and uh, I thought make a video of it. What the heck. So there you have it folks. There's the heater core and how they function using your engine's coolant and water pump to force some hot coolant through your uh, heater core to heat your vehicle. And thanks to this device here, during, if you're in a, in a situation where you have winter and you got uh, puddles of water outside your, your home uh, freezing, then you'll really appreciate the way one of these things works. So, that all said and done, take care, have a nice day, and uh, bye for now.